Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today is a very exciting episode. It's about uh, floor tiling installation, more exactly floor tiling installation over the floorboards. I have seen a lot of bad jobs over the years because they haven't used the right materials or they just haven't used the right technique. So I will show you now the right technique of installing tiles over uh, floorboards. So first thing, make sure your, fur, your floorboards are obviously secure properly, they're not moving, they're not squeaking and put as many screws as you need it and also bear in mind there might be pipes or cables under there so ideally would be to have a look and see what's underneath. Our situation, um, it's even worse, you can see here we have uh, uh, the floorboards are dipping there so we have about 8 millimeters gap there so but that will be very good for you because i will show you how we're going to level that so it we will have a nice and level floor at the end our floorboards are ton and groove so in uk you will find two different floorboards you will find the tng one so the ton and groove one and you will find the normal ones if you have normal floorboards so without ton and groove that's mean you will have to install either hardy backer board on top of them or a cement board on top of the boards. That will be installed using adhesive, tile adhesive and screws. I will show you that in the next um, images. Because we have tile and groove boards, we are going to install an insulation board. It's still a tile backer board, but it's not as rigid as the other two that I told you. But just bear in mind, this is just if you have either ton and groove boards or you have chipboard, plywood or OSB. If you have normal floorboards you need to install either cement board or a hardy backer board, the more rigid ones. And if you wonder why we choose to install these um, insulation boards is because they're much easier to work with, they're much easier to be cut and I think they do a good job. We have used them over the years, we never had a problem we installed small tiles, big tiles, um, flooring tiles, I mean the, the tiles that look like the wooden flooring, we never had a problem. So now let's start with the first step and that is priming the floor. So you have to use a very good primer, a primer that is suitable for wood and you have to use it undiluted and you have to do one coat or two coats depending of your primer, depending of, of the brand. Just read the instruction carefully and obviously prime the floor this is very very important so don't skip this and by the way don't use PVA PVA is not a primer for wood so after you prime the floor let it dry like we're doing here you can see the floor has been primed you can see the difference in color make sure you let it dry till it's dry yes so um, because it's very important that when you're putting your adhesive, it's very important that a lot of that moisture will stay there and it won't be sucked into the actual wood. So make sure you leave that primer to dry. After that, we're gonna use the, the backer boards and we're gonna use these screws and washers. We choose to use uh, 25 millimeter screws because we know the boards, the floorboards are 20 mil and the backer board is 6 mil and the washer and this way we know this screw won't penetrate the floorboards just in case if there is any pipes or any cables there we're not going to actually go into those pipes. For this application we're going to use a rapid set tile adhesive but flexible of course there's no place for any normal tile adhesive on, on jobs like this so all the adhesive, all the self-leveling compound, all the grouts, everything that you are using for uh, obviously wooden substrate it has to be flexible so we pre-cut our uh, backer boards because the tile adhesive is rapid so it's rapid said we like to cut them all at once um, make sure when you join these boards make sure you not join them on, on the actually floorboard joint like here just put them somewhere in the middle of the board otherwise you might have problems this uh, particular backer board, you can buy them in any tile shop, so any tile shop that is, uh, is decent, it will have something like this. Like I said, we like them because it's very easy to work with them, it's very easy to cut them, 
and we had good results in the past. Okay, so now we're gonna start to actually glue these pores down. Uh, mixing the adhesive, make sure you make the adhesive quite loose so um, it does go everywhere and then with the flat side of the actually notched trowel, just put it, push it in between the boards, cover all the floor and then you can use the, the notches on the trowel. Um, on this type of application, it's something that you want to be uh, looking to have 100% coverage. So if the tiles are obviously okay for 80% coverage, some of them in this in this application you want to go to have 100% coverage. So if your floor is uneven, you definitely don't want to build up your adhesive bed and use these boards and adhesive to straighten and level your floor. That is something that you will have to do after with a cell leveling compound and I will show you that in the next images. In here our concern is to glue these boards down so they are as close as possible to the floorboards and have 100% coverage. Move them left to right and then I will use these screws and washers. Some people like to use them after, after the daisy has been dried. I like to use them before so I want to make sure that my screws are pulling the boards down especially I'll, because I will do self leveling after that so it doesn't matter if in one place let's say the screw has uh, took the board lower one millimeter or something like that. You will see me now uh, putting the screws and the washers so normally I put them in between the boards so one screw and one washer will hold two sides of the boards and then I'll do one in the middle one at the end so normally three across the board but if you feel like you need more just put more I always like to have more because if you have more screws and you don't need them that's fine but if you have less screws than you need and you don't have them then you might have a problem so always do more than you, you think you need so gluing these uh, backer boards on the floorboards we're trying to create a floor that moves like one so instead of having individual floorboards moving all over the place this will be just one floor and it will move together in this case if all it everything is been done correctly this floor will be as one piece and you won't have any any cracks in the grout line or in the tiles so the boards are glued down now and they also dry so they uh, the days have dried uh, it's been an hour maybe an hour and a half and being a uh, roughly set the days is already dry we put some um, some duct tape around the perimeter because we are preparing to pour the self leveling compound and uh, we like to put some tape around just to make sure that the self leveling compound doesn't go in some cracks or some uh, spaces and uh, we're gonna we're gonna lose the level and now i will show you my uh, preferred method of uh, leveling a floor using uh, packers plastic packers the first step that we do is we have to find out what is the highest point of the floor and where it is. In this case is on the right hand side of the living room door. I will show you the level now so you know what I'm talking about. Um, look at the level now you can see the, it's a bit um, off level so it's about a millimeter so that is the right hand side of the actually door frame. So we're gonna start that with a three millimeter packer, uh, the other way around, yeah. So three millimeter where is the highest point and then four and so on. We're just gonna go down and, and do our levels. We start with a three millimeter packer because the minimum pour for self leveling is three millimeters. So you have to pour from three millimeters going up. But by doing that, soon I just realized that when I got to the door, I had quite a few millimeters and then the tiles was just, just. So I figured out that maybe the door won't open or maybe the door will actually scratch the tiles. So I decide, you will see that in a minute, I decide to lose those three millimeters by the front door, by the living room door and go with zero from there and do the level this way not ideal but it's nothing that i can do because obviously this this being a upvc door you can't really cut that so you see you see now that uh, i will lower that and i'll place a tile over those packers and i try the door 
and um, he was just just you know so I start with a three millimeters packet in here you can see it and then work my way the other way so I just finish with zero by the door so when we when we're gonna pull the self leveling we won't go up to the door up to the actually living room dog you'll see what I mean I'll do a pencil line mark and we'll just stop to that line and that distance from where we're finishing with the uh, self leveling compound and the uh, zero section we're just gonna fill that with tile adhesive I understand that this may be confusing but uh, trust me you will get that uh, when you will see the images I want to say a few words about the uh, self leveling compound so this is what we're using is a rapid drying fiber reinforcement is a must to have fibers in your self leveling compound when you put it on a plywood or on a wooden substrate yeah so very important to be flexible very important to add the amount of water they, they say on the back and not more than that and if someone wonder why we have placed those packers on the floor because this way will be a lot more easier to keep our self leveling um, straight and level just because it says self leveling compound doesn't mean that you can just pour it in the middle of the room and expect it to go everywhere because that's not going to happen you have to help this to actually level especially the one that has fibers inside that needs even more help you probably saw one of my other videos where we was um, laying self-leveling compound uh, basically you just uh, throw it on the floor and then uh, help it with the trowel to actually go everywhere bear in mind to be at the same level at the same level with those uh, packers and if someone is uh, wondering why we didn't took all the floorboards out all the joists or just uh, repair the joists and make everything nice and flat and then having like a piece of plywood or a chipboard over and then obviously just packer boards or a ditra mat um, is because some of the jobs you just don't have the budget the client wants only see the job to be done on a specific budget and this is obviously a much cheaper version than having everything else uh, replaced I will show you now how we did with the self leveling uh, it's been about 30 minutes since we uh, put it down it was very hot uh, maybe too hot it was over 30 degrees outside so I just hope this cell leveling is not gonna crack because they say usually dries in two hours well it's just been 30 minutes and then you can obviously walk on it you can put a level on it we obviously won't walk on it because it's still weak and we don't want that to crack but I just placed the level to show you that um, we did a very very decent job and now laying the tiles will be much easier uh, because we're just going to use the notch and trowel and now if someone is wondering how is this cell leveling working I'm just going to show you now uh, we put a piece we put a some leveling compound on this um, backer board uh, we let it dry till the next day and now let's try and see if we can actually remove it and how easy it is to remove it so you can see straight away it doesn't go off very easily and it does break the face of the actually backer board so it comes with the actually face of the backer board it doesn't come clean um, you can see I'm just bending it and it does crack obviously but it doesn't come up clean so every piece that comes off is with the actually face um, of the backer board and it does expose the reinforcement mesh of this uh, backer board so I think it does do a pretty decent job and bear in mind this is not this is like an average uh, uh, self leveling compound an average price it's not the best it's one of the uh, basic ones that we use it does have fibers and so on now you saw us um, measuring for the tiles we'd like to have these tiles center of the doorway as much as possible and we want to obviously have as less as possible in terms of cutting so we want to go with full tiles as much as possible you will see me now start laying the tiles I won't go in very big uh, details about laying the tiles because I have a different video um, how to lay tiles for beginners there's a lot more information there and here you can see me using the uh, flat side of the actually trowel 
key in the daisy this is how it's called to key in the daisy just to make sure that the daisy goes everywhere and it does key to the sub substrate um, I said that before but I'll repeat myself even if the substrate look nice and flat in reality if you look to a microscope that won't be that nice and flat so by using your uh, flat side of the trowel and just push the daisy in you will make sure that you have obviously a very good bone also bear in mind this is the type of floor that you want to go uh, from 90% coverage going up so you want to have at least 90% coverage under your tiles so I reckon you should back butter your tiles so basically you should put some adhesive on the back of the tiles with the flat side of the trowel um, just obviously putting the tiles down without having any any adhesive on the back uh, maybe the first tiles where your adhesive will be will be loose you might have a good coverage but uh, if you put uh, adhesive like i did uh, let's say uh, about half a square meter you will find out that maybe the last tiles won't have 100 percent coverage so uh, bear in mind it doesn't take long I know people have different opinions about this but um, in floors like this where you have movement uh, where things can go actually wrong I definitely recommend to back butter your tiles um, I will show you now how long it takes so you can see me now camera is on normal so it's not on the speed mode I'm using a bucket trowel you can obviously it's much faster to use your notched trowel but I'm using the bucket trowel just to show you that it doesn't take long so you see it took me a couple of seconds then I place the tile down and now I will lift it and I will show you how it does look on the back you see so that is 100% coverage this is something that you want to achieve on a floor like this in a shower and in a wet room area so this will be for this video let me show you the level um, we achieve a pretty level floor I mean it's, it's quite perfect uh, we have a nice and level floor it's nice and flat I think it looks good um, remember how the floor was we have uh, we had quite a few differences in um, in level so um, yeah this will be everything for now I hope you enjoy it I hope you learn something don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time with a, with a different video. Thank you.